Bulaku, everyone. Uh, I'm Seema Sahar Zerhi. I'm the Premier's Press Secretary. Today is Tuesday, January 25th, uh, and we're doing another one of our COVID press conferences. Uh, today we'll have the Premier sharing the numbers as per usual. Uh, he'll be followed by Minister Atiago, who will share an update, uh, and the uh, Chief Public Health Officer. Uh, we also have Minister Main, Minister Gross, uh, Minister Juanasi in the room for any additional questions that you might have for them. Thank you. Last Kutan Sima, Sibulak Tibala Yulerina Mutatinga, Lumina Gajaulak January twenty five, the Matos of Pitsia, the Alam Mimata, Sibulak Tatsuni, Nuhataku, Minister Hayaro, Halimalang Mayor of Melang, and Nahamani to Larry Marie, or Halimalang Mayor Cabani, Migu, Minister Main, Grass, and Malujana Sapers of Togumopata. Uh, uh, Idul Gabdunin, eleven Saddunin, twenty four Idulinne, forty one Ikalunne, zero Uxotomin, one Kimrumin, thirteen Kingamnin, zero Kugabdunin, eleven Nauyan, zero Padnoto, two Mitimatale, one Cricket Pardua. 18 Kangathlina, 4 Sanagaya, 29 Sanikilua, 3 Talodwanin, and 3 Tikirabdwanin. Udango Yok Nalunersigo Nasivo 90, Nuvano Duaharon Nathun, Takwa Katili Martha went 518 Ulotu, Nuvano Duahangitun, Tan Nuvano Dua, Nunavum Mokaila to the room. Tan Kate Tikan Rumavunga, Nunavu Mutanitana, Luta Patterson, Atuluku Yangin, Malin Narehagatigum, Takua Nuna Levun, Uluwa Natumirunagin, Pidwang Watum, Ukwa Hitum Makulu, Ilinia Padia Matapina Suaro Sigiatin, Kate Tikan Rumavunga, Angi Rasimagum Narosi, Angi Rasimagisi, Katahatigi Hatatasin, Amisulu Hatangi Jutin, Kapurta Unarosi, Kapurta Lucin. Kinam Kinam Matwasi Magun Latin, Matwasi Menaratan Latin, and Matako, and Nuvan Nodzuaha Kasi Wigusi, Tako, Ukala, Initata Simajan, Ukala Lugin, how you get the Weharosil, how you get the Lucin, how you magata, Tan, Nuvan Nodzuang, Asualo, Atrisima, Uvatin Nizimatia, Tan, um, Kaiti Tikan Rumagivunga, Tan, Katujatiki, the Tanigutinaratigum. Pidong Watome, Nuna Lemuta Hatti Kulubun, Isimagitia Hatarum Narotigum, so Hoyanamem Udakum Udaku to Nunavumun, especially the, the elders that are listening in uh, this morning. As of this morning, Nunavun has 247 positive cases of COVID 19. We have active cases in 17 communities. The reported numbers are 24 in Akvian, 37 in Baker Lake, 24 in Cambridge Bay, 1 in Chesterfield Inland, 11 in Core Harbor, 24 in Nidlulik, 41 in Nikhalwain, 0 in Johaven, 1 in Kimmeron, 13 in Kingain, 0 in Kugaljuk, 11 in Nauyan, 0 in Pannotho, 2 in Pondinland, 1 in Khikirtarjuang, 18 in Rankinland, 4 in Sanirayak, 29 in Sanikiluak, 3 in Talodjuak, 3 in Whale Cove. We have 90 reported recoveries today. There has been 518 total reported recoveries in this outbreak. 
I want to once again remind Nunavumu to adhere to public health measures. We all must do our part to keep our communities safe, especially as our children as our children are returning to the classrooms this week. Please continue to stay home when possible, stick to your small bubbles, get vaccinated, and get your booster shot when possible. Always wear a mask, alert the COVID, COVID hotline, and isolate if you have any symptoms. Grappling with this pandemic has not been easy, and it really takes a toll on all of us. But please be patient, kind, and community-minded. So, Tigui <laughs> Testimony December 2021 20, Ila <laughs> Good morning. Over the weekend, we received confirmation of a positive COVID result at the Akiyavik Correctional Healing Facility. With the support of the Department of Health and correctional medical staff have conducted approximately 170 PCR tests of clients and staff to identify those impacted. To date, 12 tests have come back positive and we are awaiting further results, which could result in increase in positive results within our facility. With the positive case in December 2021, the corrections implemented more strict protocols within all our facilities. With COVID now, the facility, with COVID now, the facility, we have increased COVID contingencies which includes dedicated wings for isolating clients. 
As part of our protocol, the Correctional he Healing Facility will be conducting tests every 72 hours. <coughs> I want to assure families of our clients and the staff that every safety precaution is being taken. With space available, available in the new facility, we are currently able to accommodate and safely isolate those that have tested positive. I also wanna thank our dedicated facility staff who are working very hard to address this situation and ensure client safety. For our five other correction facilities, we continue to monitor the situation and remain prepared. Thank you. Good morning. Yesterday evening, we announced uh, changes to public health measures in Igloolik. This was uh, needed to help control the rapid spread of COVID-19 in the community. Effective immediately, gathering limits have been decreased to zero except for emergencies. Schools, non-essential businesses, and most government offices are closed and masks continue to be mandatory. I urge everyone to follow these rules to help stop the spread of the virus. The situation in Iglulik demonstrates how quickly this virus can spread. It is vital that people in all communities continue to follow the public health measures, get vaccinated, wear a mask and isolate it, pardon me, isolate when advised. Taking these steps will help protect all Nunavomia. Matosimagali, <laughs> New shipments of the Pfizer pediatric vaccine will begin arriving in communities on January 30th. Schedules and more information are available on the GN website at gov.nu.ca. I encourage everyone who is eligible for the vaccine to get vaccinated. The vaccines are our best defense against COVID-19. I would like to remind people who are waiting for COVID-19 tests uh, not to call the COVID-19 hotline or the health center. You will be contacted with your results. Thank you. Questions? No questions today. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Teresa Khetchuk, CBC News. Novak Jorna, Siama Palia, Manuna Lenni, Hano, Ipigosu Simalekisi, Capizong Ninixani, Nuna Lenni, Hanima Nixa of a Pau Balo, Siama Siama Hataka, Sukan Nixame. Now that there is community spread in commun, sorry, now that there's yeah, community spread in communities, what are you noticing about communities with lower vaccination rates? Are people sicker? And when they, sorry, when they get COVID or does, does it spread quicker? Um, uh, we haven't done enough, we haven't had enough numbers and done enough analysis of the numbers that we do have to notice a specific difference in Nunavut, but the statistics tell us that uh, we should expect faster spread and more severe illness in communities that have had less vaccine uptake. There's a number of other factors that determine how fast and how far uh, infections going to spread. Uh, decisions that individuals take and their, uh, you know, what they do after returning home or when returning home after travel, uh, whether or not we wear a mask, uh, where they work, all of those things impact the spread as well. Uh, Namine inu iniko hatak to kapisa goma pata kapisa goma ngi patalone kisiani ilangi inu it na lautiko hatak to ubalone hakita wasa koti tika hatak to namine isumagizang inne manauzo anya hak nangi tulirin mo maligani sukay hatak hat inu it na lautiko kay mata at tanap ni kay tilogi nubak kapisa unerme. It's a personal choice whether or not to get vaccinated, but some people share their opinions about it publicly on social media or community radio. Are any public health regulations being broken when people say on community radio that vaccines are dangerous? Uh, no, they're, um, they're not. If they're not speaking from a professional license or position like that, they're not breaking public health regulations, uh, but that doesn't get around the fact that what they're saying is not correct. Uh, there's ample, uh, there's there's lots of information, there's lots of data showing that the vaccines are far safer than infection at every age group. <laughs> Radio Canada. I think my next question is for Minister Main. Um, so you've said last week that um, the rapid test being sent by Ottawa would arrive today. Um, can you let us know how that's going and how many uh, tests will be sent to each community or how the distribution will look like exactly? Um, in terms of those rapid tests, uh, I can only speak for the Department of Health. Um, the distribution of the rapid tests to other departments within the government is being handled by the COVID Secretariat, and so that's within uh, the Premier's department. 
uh, in terms of the Department of Health. Um, we are not planning on using uh, the rapid take home test kits for any of our uh, staff or facilities. Uh, our, our staff facilities have uh, access to either PCR testing or the ID now uh, rapid test uh, equipment that's at the community level. So I need to. Rapid test COVID secretariat. Uba gudli ya an ay ta eliti chiku bluta pila ka bigya bu tauduk sugi nuna bu ilwani tama ko nga di atu atong na yung itugu rapid test ko nga tau yun ay duty ya ko hok do tama ko kawi hagoti do abang nagtukut ahia ni kawi hagoti ni atok tong na abta at na ay ta eliti chiku bluta tama na um, I'll uh, give the Premier an opportunity to talk about this a bit more. Uh, Marco Pinasuarosi, Kangi Kanerote, Amisukan, Niri Wijabu, Nunalit in Utakua, Tunu Kata over the Anatotin, so Tana Nalunero Natabu Langwayo. Thank you for the question. I can confirm that uh, 68,000 rapid test kits will be uh, arriving to Nunavut this week. Um, and of those, I want to stress the importance that those instructions will be provided in all languages, Inutitud in uh, French and English. Um, we do expect more uh, shipments uh, that we'll be able to distribute to the communities uh, in two weeks' time. But uh, later this week, those tests will be coming in terms of the 68,000. Um, just to follow up here, so to a question that has been asked last week, I think if I'm not wrong, Minister Main said that they would be in priority distributed to frontline workers, businesses, municipalities. Is that still the case? Are you on the long-term planning to be giving tests to the general public as well? Is that a long-term goal? Sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, so yeah, the, the priority in terms of uh, the frontline workers still remains. Um, so perhaps if I could get Minister Main to elaborate in terms of that again, in terms of that statement. So Minister Main. What <laughs> Uh, 
na kano ikayok ti ublo ni maniyo yun eh uh, atu ti kakayak mga arata mo ko uh, kawi ha I can't answer that question right now in terms of whether tests will be distributed to the general public. As you can tell, in terms of us changing chairs, it's a it's a kind of a joint effort in terms of the, the different departments within the government. And uh, CPHO Patterson is uh, providing guidance uh, to the different departments. As the Premier mentioned, um, there's a, a priority on frontline workers, um, but it, it is possible that uh, there would be some distribution to the public. I just can't answer that for you right now. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Trevor Wright, none of it news. Uh, a couple of questions for Dr. Patterson. Uh, as everyone probably knows, the uh, schools have opened up yesterday. Um, uh, are the current numbers and the rising cases in Igluic any way connected to that, or is it earlier, earlier, earlier testing? Trevor Wright, no number news kung ni tay mailin na bi matuig palya kanili lang o tay patsa. Taka kami sumo palya sa maning Igluic ni sa mas sa mayo. Uh, no, they're not linked with the school opening. We saw the numbers starting to rise over the weekend, and uh, that had yeah had nothing to do with the schools. Thanks. Ah, gata man na ilin na abi matulaw ng ino pidyo te hangito pinasawo siyo nung wani kaya mamesong opalya ng ihaw yu balya lilaw at tigo. I do realize measures are in, in cohorts and whatnot are in place, but are we expecting a rise in numbers, even if it, if it's a small one? Um, it's possible, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, the school's uh, Department of Education has a number of uh, measures in place for schools that uh should reduce transmission and so we'd expect that in most cases transmission in schools will be less than what's happening in the community Uh, David Venn, the Natsiak News. Um, can the case rise in a Gluic be attributed to anything? Uh, if so, what? David, can the case rise in a Gluic be attributed to anything? If so, what? David, can the case rise in a Gluic be attributed to anything? If so, what? David, can the case rise in a Gluic be attributed to anything? We don't know for certain yet what the root cause of it is. Um, does this make you rethink uh, easing restrictions in other communities? Rethink what? Easing measures. Oh, it's a Um, it's always a possibility when we ease measures that there will be a spike in numbers for a variety of reasons and we have to be prepared to uh, monitor and react accordingly but it's also the case that new events can occur at any time you know, individuals can arrive with covid and trigger significant spread uh, regardless of the measures so um, i'll let uli interpret that and then i'll carry on um
the the take home message should be that this kind of outbreak in a community can happen at at any time and um, we have to keep our eyes open to the, the signals that it's happening and maintain the flexibility to respond uh, quickly and appropriately when it does happen. Emma Tranter, the Canadian Press. What do you mean by rapid spread in Igloo Lake? If you look at the case count, it's not necessarily a lot higher than other communities. What do you mean exactly that there's rapid spread? Emma Tranter, Canadian Press. There's, um, with the lag in the numbers that are reported on the, uh, on every day, um, it, it doesn't give us every number that we know of or that the staff in the community, at the, in the community health center are aware of. And with the uh, number of people who are reporting, there's a number of other signals that of spread that we're concerned about. I'll talk about those in a second. Other things that indicated the situation was, uh, or the that case counts were expanding rapidly in Agulik. Um, the nurses, uh, staff at the health center have uh, had enough tests lined up to keep their ID now devices busy at least until the end of Wednesday. Um, the uh, calls to the hotline from uh, residents of Agulik um, were higher than any other community in the territory. Um, and the number of households, uh, in addition to the number of cases, the number of households that have been exposed has risen dramatically as well. So I fully expect that over the next two to three days, we'll see much higher numbers in Agulik. Um, and we um, were at the point where within Agulik, there, there's not enough capacity to do proper contact tracing. How <laughs> Just to pick up on what you just said, there are no contact tracers. What's our capacity like? You said two weeks ago we're stretched thin. Are we still in that situation right now? Um, capacity has improved overall across the territory, but um, in order for to work, we have to think of that whole strategy, test, trace, isolate, and support. And if our testing is an extra two to three days behind and getting further behind, then our ability to do contact tracing is uh, the the number of people is not that important when there's that kind of delay. Um, 
This weekend, the GN held a booster clinic for youth in Iqaluit, but Health Canada is recommending uh, booster doses for people older than 18. Also, last week, the World Health Organization said there was no evidence anyone 18 and under needed a booster. Why is the GN vaccinating youth with boosters? Um, the, uh, so a number of reasons. There's a lot of questions about what the benefit is. Um, but there's also a lot of people who, a lot of evidence that for people who received the booster or sorry re received their second dose six months or more ago that their protection is uh is fading um and it's um we were in a situation where you you could have a 16 or 17 year old who maybe has some uh extra risk because of medical problems but can't get a, do a third booster and a healthy 18 year old can get one. So uh, like a number of regions uh, nationally and internationally, uh, we've authorized it uh, for a third dose for those who want it. Um, we would not mandate it for that age range because of the, those, the controversy and the unanswered questions. But for those parents and individuals who want a third dose, and it's been at least six months in that age range, we will uh, we'll go ahead with it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tako solo sixteen ni seventeen ni lo ni ukiuli solo kani ma guti tama ko ulog na tumi na sa gun na mi matay lang it amalo kano ingi to eighteen ni ukiuli tama ko kapayaw gun na tilugin na mi to ina kanatami nuna jo amilo tama kapayaw ko yaw hatag to tama kalo atilugin na pingayon ni kapayaw guti nga Asego behang itu ko kapi yau gya hal lagi tichingi kalo ato ko kasi ani tama ko ame so kiu yau sumangin ningin no ang yau kaya yau yau sumasaksi o katagom na ato kito ng amin ni kapi yau kan na kuya mga ta nalo na yaksi ko na kaya chio lao mga upal ako tata chio mga how many youth attended the clinic over the weekend to get the booster I think they administered about two hundred doses plus or minus a bit, but I don't know how many of were adults versus youth. 200. Um, as the pandemic is evolving, scientists are um, saying that COVID is more likely to always be there. It's going to be the new, it's just the new reality. Um, is COVID-19 endemic to Nunavut? And if so, how um, how would that new reality look like here? Matisse, Highway Radio, Canada, Kumni, Taman, Nunak, John, Sama, Pella, Samaning, a video to get logo. How you saw Tim Marie, you have some along at Taman, Nataman, in the Hatam, the Alumni, and Nunula, Samajago, Nanga, Taman, and Nova, John, nineteen. Thank you.
I think we have to be really careful with that word. Um, endemic means from an ep epidemiologic point of view, it means that it's at a steady state, that there's, you know, a certain number of infections every year and it, it um, like it's predictable, that sort of stuff. And clearly we're not there at this point and we're nowhere near there. Um, COVID might become endemic or it may, you know, we may see periodic outbreaks and clusters. Um, it's really hard to predict. Um, I'll let Uli interpret that then I'll carry on. The reason I said that we need to be careful with that word or the way when we use it, that it means different things to a lot of, to, to many people and, and some are using it to imply that uh, this is as good as it's going to get and we should just accept that. Um, but the reality, they're ignoring the fact that much of the world's not vaccinated and until we've got uh, adequate levels of vaccination around the world, we should expect to see more variants and uh, clusters and outbreaks. But again, in the context of we're expecting more variants, we're expecting more vaccine boosters in the future, that's for sure. But how would that new reality in the near future look like specifically in Nunavut in the context of the healthcare system here? I'm sorry, there's just no realistic way to predict that right now. It could look, um, uh, if we look at various infectious diseases, we see some that only show up periodically, like uh, pertussis and we see others like RSV where there's a little bit of transmission most of the most of the time with spikes during certain seasons um, and everything in between um, so it depends a lot on uh, vaccination rates the variant we're talking about uh, a number of things that I cannot predict what's pertussis uh, 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 back on the topic of uh, mass vaccination clinics, uh, have you guys managed to organize more mass clinics in other communities here? Trevor <laughs> 
kap yu ina mo toga ngay na hakik ti tau na tu ama ahingit ni eight ni nunaring ni pita kadang itu gaduak ami hunu toga ngay unik kihe ni tama ko kaputi atuin na na tu gadui nunali luktanik. Thanks for the question, Trevor. So we have developed a plan for mass vaccination clinics. There will be 16 communities seeing clinics over the next few weeks, stretching into mid February, mid to late February, and there will be eight communities not seeing clinics or not having mass vaccination clinics, but. Uh, the pediatric uh, vaccine will be available in every community. And in those communities that don't have mass vaccination clinics, it'll be through appointment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you have a, I, I guess, a, a goal with all these clinics. Is it just to raise the vaccination rate or is it to reach a certain threshold? Is there a certain uh, goal, I guess? Do I have to say? Aku ambil suruh nak pergi sini untuk tak tahu tu yang nak dilugi. Kita mesti tukar gaya hak si. Ambil suruh nak spain nak pergi sini sebab nak mau balok kanu. Mana? Wang ali tukar gaya yang 100%. Kapi yau yau dulu aku duduk dah. Kapi yau kani kima lek pada wang aneng mina kau weh weh yak tu ngah. Kehi ni antena teri teri cik kublu tak. Na how timik. Tora aga kay yaptin ni, nalo na kay himang itugut. Kihani, amihu na kat kapiyaw himang pata. Ulo ulo kay nangi tumihaw pa amihu na kaw na ang mata. Ayaw tuin ang na sa tigut man na tabu na. So personally, my goal is 100% uptake of the vaccine for everyone who who can take it. I don't know if that's achievable or not, but as a department, we haven't set a number and said this is what we are heading for. Uh, we are working towards uh, increasing vaccination rates in Nunavut because we know that the more people are vaccinated, uh, the, the less the risks are from COVID-19, uh, less uh, spread, and all, the, all these benefits that come with vaccination. And so we're going to keep working at this and uh, assisting Nunavut mute to to get vaccinated when and where they can. Uh, I thought I'd squeeze in one last uh, hospitalization number question. Uh, is it still ten? Uh, it's actually nine. Um, there, we've uh, corrected the numbers a little bit, so. Were uh, some of them were taken off the list? Nine, nine, uh, we looked at David Van Nunatiak News. Uh, my questions are for Minister Main. How many communities are vaccines currently not being offered in because of staffing issues? David, do not share news. Could not have seen. Do not leave. Nita man na kaputi atuin na ngila. Mat na um man na tukihi o maya kung do not leave look tani atuin na uyu galuit kihi ani ah okak tu luaf luma ah imaka ublu nu. Kapinu kia utak kita itu tak hendak kaya kaktu, ukuah kapi yau ha kemayu ini kami utak kita itu hendak kaya diit, baluni kau imang hitam nik video ha kemayu tak kaya hendak kaya dik, iya ni tu kihiu maya kununa di luk tani, atuin nau himayu galuit, ukuah nutak kanu tokang ayu kaputit, apa kau tigin nau wigit. Nunaring nut huli, outlay yau balle amata, teman napi juta o ina kaya din mak nunadi langit ni. So my my understanding is that there are no you know there are no vaccine blackouts or where there's no vaccine available. There are vaccines available 
In every community, there may be delays that I can't speak to in terms of individual cases where uh, people may be required to wait for a number of days for their vaccination appointment. And uh, the other caveat that I'll add to that is that in terms of the pediatric vaccines, um, there are some communities where uh, these are currently being shipped out. Uh, so they're not available right now, but that's part of our vaccination clinics where we have uh, published information uh, indicating when the pediatric vaccines will be available at the community level. And yes. Um, would you be able to tell me which communities don't have the pediatric vaccines available? Um, so the, the information that we've published uh, on public service announcement, I don't know if it's come out yet or not. Uh, there's eight communities that are listed and the pediatric vaccines are due to arrive between January 31st and February 3rd. So in the short term. I'm a transfer of the Canadian press. I think my questions are for the Justice Minister. Have any fines been given out um, since this wave has started? And if so, how many and how much? I'm a transfer of Canadian press. I'm a transfer of the Canadian press. I'm a transfer of the Pillugo <laughs> Uh, EIA um, so drang twenty-one um, I can confirm that there's been 21 calls received to the RCMP uh, under the enforcement component, and there has been no fines provided uh, to Nunavumun. However, we've been providing educational and reinforcement in terms of the orders that Dr. Patterson's provided. So, Khoyanamun. This question might actually be for the Justice Minister this time. I'm just wondering. Um, in terms of the jail um, and the COVID cases there, I'm just wondering, is the jail closed to visitors? Is it technically locked down like it was during the last wave? Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, there is no vis visitations, and all the all the other programmings are are currently closed right now and for those that are tested positive as i mentioned we uh, we're dedicating a wing to 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 those to ensure that there's there's no further spread thank you Teresa hetrick cbc news my question is for minister main Uh, 
ano na government nga pag nasa malaka ina to hong ni embassy was meet ni tamaw ngay gya ay karon no ina kuving ano is the GN planning on bringing back elders at the embassy west to the facility here? Matna, tapat tumingin ako pa kayo bit. Idan inutok ako hibig, tamang niya kalung ni. Matuwa ako malak, tiyuk ako ako malak, tiyuk tamang nakubay na tok. Iglulay kayo pero kut matna awa suwit, tapat tumingin ako pila kaya ka, pila kaya pila kaya katigi himagap tiyuk. Nukta ang ngotak tao yung mga kalok tisulo tana nutoka o hibe kalung ni tukihiyo mayakut i ilang araw-araw mi tu mi help tu tamang akti tao niya tu galuit kihe ni kapio niya mga tanalo niya kay yudlo ay tunga kung unak tu hin na kaya kang ni ano tamang nao ka wala kay yudlo ay mga apu kawi mangit nama Thanks for the question. Um, first of all, on the Ekaluit Elders uh, facility, I'd like to thank the Nunavut Housing Corporation for working with our department in terms of uh, getting the reno required renovations done to that facility, and I look forward to seeing it open again. Um, and there, there will be uh, some residents returning uh, from Embassy West uh, into that facility. Uh, however, I don't want to specify a number uh, because I'm concerned about uh, privacy and I don't want to cross any lines there. But the answer, short answer is yes. Hano, pili sa hatak ta kuno nga ilang inya ni ka uji kuman ni pata embassy was meet to me. Taman na namini isumalio isumalio ta ugun na ka balo nuna vote government ngano ang ekta ang ekta ka ka. What is the process for anyone who would like to bring a family member back home from Embassy West? Is it a choice or does the GN have to approve it? What <laughs> Taman na tao tuk kapitigo, ihen ilagi yung itao, ahing it ni tao tuk mata, nakawin mayakak mata, pila ka katigil sugit, ilagi yaw yut, aki ko katigil niluk ta kapitigo, piyo na pango niya tumi, at nang tayo litit sinyak tao tuk sugo, kawin man naksunil lo, taman na akong nagtuhok ma ilang agot, Uwa gud, na tayo dito chico bluta. Ilagi yao yut pila ka tigini luksugi piyo na pamut. Toka ang niluin na kaluak tuhut. Inu toka it bikano. So in terms of your question, the in terms of the Department of Health, we're looking at the health needs of of the elders who are at Embassy West, which on a person by person basis can can differ uh, there's different factors or different needs that that are there in terms of the medical care um, but then the family of the the elders in question you know obviously have a an understanding of the individual's other needs and so we try to work with the the families or and or the the guardians of uh, those those elders who are in Ottawa to try and find the best uh, solution for them, the best situation where their medical needs can be met, and and obviously recognizing that these uh, situations can be very difficult uh, for the families, for uh, everyone involved, um, but not just looking at the medical needs, but also trying to work with the families to find the the best um, solution for. Uh, the the care of the the elders, so I, I, I that's the best I can answer th that question at this point. So does it have to be approved first by you guys by the government? Uh, 
Anak tahu gak kah kayak kah, kapan mak kundo tak kita hubung apa tak? Um, mana? No. Uh, maybe if you could elaborate a little bit more on your question. Kapan apa kau tiga ya? Anak tahu. Nado naik kena tu luar naon ni. Anak kah kah kisi, anak kau jigo apa tak ilang ini? Do you have to approve? the person who wants to bring an elder back home. Matna, um, we have to be involved in, in the decision and uh, in terms of the medical care, uh, there is uh, an approval process, um, but as I mentioned, it's a collaborative um, approach between the family and or the guardian of of the individual i angak angak taga ka hok tu uh at na te di ti chinak tau tu klu ki he ni pil re ka ti ki klu ki lagi yo yo tu baloni ne ne ki ki yo yo ti ko tau hi ma yo uh pil re ni ka tak tu thank you mat na think my question is for dr patterson Matisarte, Radio Canada. Um, considering the lack of healthcare workers, have you ever considered to um, allow those who test pos positive but are asymptomatic to continue working as it's been done or considered in the South? I didn't understand. Matisse Harvey. Can you say that again? Yeah. Um, so that's something that's been uh, done, for example, in Quebec. It's been considered in other jurisdictions. Mm. Considering here the lack of, of healthcare workers, are you considering to let people who test positive but are asymptomatic to continue working? <laughs> Um, we have not had any time where we've allowed somebody who's infected but still infectious to provide direct clinical care. Uh, and I don't think things are there at this point. Um, we've never considered it. We have had a couple of times where people have worked from home when they're positive, but that's as far as we've gone. Um, what is the daily testing capacity uh, for PCR and rapid tests? How many uh, daily PCR and rapid tests are we able to do at the moment? Um, the absolute number of PCR tests is probably three to 400 a day, but that means that there's at least one lab tech in Rankin and one in Iqaluit who's not doing anything else. In the uh, remaining communities, they have uh, one or two ID now devices and those can do two to three per hour. Uh, Three hundred below four hundred. Ulutama, how is Sakatarunato?
Thank you, everyone. That concludes our media conference today. Um, we'll have another one this Thursday at 11 a.m. Uh, and in the interim, we'll have the daily post with the graphics about case counts. And if there's any uh, additional updates, there'll be uh, the news releases that we'll announce.